uh, and for the opportunity. So today I'll be taking on a interesting topic and a in topic that's a postrolateral approach to ankle. Evolved over the last 10 years like anything. Uh, it's an approach which uh, everyone who wants to do ankle surgeries should know about. And uh, let's, I'll take you through this topic and it will be a video demonstration of the exposure, the indications for the approach, the complications of the approach. So as I said, it has emerged as the approach of choice to address posterior malleolar fractures as it aids in anatomic reduction and stable fixation of the fragment. The initial approaches from anterior to posterior, we all know is not the right way of fixing. We want the most stable construct. It's always from posterior. And as it's an intraarticular fracture, anatomic reduction is the key. And to achieve this, a good exposure is a must. It's also the entry in some complex pylon cases. So we will be taking across some cases as well, similar one. So a little bit of anatomy, which we all should know. So this is an ankle view from the lateral aspect, from the posterior aspect in the lateral position. So we can see the tendoaculus once it's gone, on the lateral side, we have got the peroneus longus and brevis. Medially, we have the flexor hallucis longus. And the structures at risk, which we should know, are a sural nerve, which is all very close to the incision, the short saphenous vein and its system, the peroneal artery deeper. On the medial side, we got the tibial nerve and the posterior tibial vessels, which are not at risk in this approach, but you should know while placing the retractors. And then once we go to the deep, this is the PITFL or the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, which attaches the posterior malleolus with the fibula. So let's go to the video demonstration. And this refers to a case, a 58 year old female sustained a road traffic accident, swelling and deformity. This grass swelling was there and an examination reveals a trimalleolar fracture, a medial malleolus fracture, a fibula fracture running all the way up and then a posterior malleolus which is visualized in this lateral view. It is a PER4 injury, pronation external rotation kind of an injury. So we follow the span scan fix principle. We spanned the fracture first and then we went into the scanning to get a CD scan and a better appreciation of the morphology. We can see the posterior malleolar fracture over here, a medial malleolar fracture, which is more like a vertical sort. And actually the medial malleolar fracture is more of a posterior medial variant, as you can see over here. So we got a publication where we have published about how to go across. So the positioning can be a prone approach, which we chose in this case of the video recording, or we can do it in the lateral position, which, uh, which also I prefer, which we will discuss in the discussion where to choose which one. So to go about the skin marking, we got the fibula marked over here, the tendoaculus, and this is the nerve, sural nerve, which goes all the way across from here to here. And this is a skin incision. I use a 15 number blade for my foot and ankle surgeries as it gives good control over the depth of the incision, which we need to make. In the subcutaneous plane, we get the sural nerve. There are a lot of variations of the sural nerve. It can come all the way. Usual variant is proximally it is medial. As we go distally, we get the nerve which crosses the operative field as seen in this case. So these are some tweaks of nerves which could see in this case. There are a lot of variations also as to single branch or multiple tweaks. So this is another case. You can see the skin incision which is marked and a probable route for the sural nerve. And you see what? When we expose, this is exactly where the nerve is passing. It's more easier to always locate the nerve at the distal aspect of your incision as this is a more constant location where it tends to be closer to the fibula rather than up where it can range anywhere from here to here. So next going to the first layer of the dissection. So we are giving a incision over the fascia and the muscle underlying this is the peronea group of the muscle. We have got the peronea longus, which will be more laterally and the peronea brevis, which is more deeper and it will hug the posterior surface of the fibula as we go deep. 
now we have put in a retractor to retract the peroneae group laterally and the tendo achilles medially so here we can see the fascia this fascia is overlying the flexor group of muscle the flexor hallucis muscle which is a deeper structure and some of the fibers of the peroneae tends to come from the fascia overlying the flexor hallucis longus so next the deeper layer of the dissection as i said this is the posterior border of the fibula and we have to make a sharp dissection and this entire bulk is the flexor hallucis so if you understand the anatomy the flexor hallucis longus has its insertion from the posterior border of the fibula the medial surface of the fibula the interosseous membrane and then the posterior surface of the distal tibia so as a whole the muscle needs to be elevated and taken laterally as we have seen and then we have applied in a retractor you can see how we have retracted and taken the flexor group muscle more medially and this is the posterior malus fracture over here which will become more clear you can use a gauze piece to create a space and get more exposure and once we got subsequent exposure we need to put in the homans retractor this has to be superior still as we have the posterior tibial vessels on the medial side i am clearing more space superiorly as much as required for the application of a plate now coming distally we need the clearing the more space distally and applying the retractor prop and now we can see the joint over here this is the capsule posteriorly wherein i am inserting and rechecking it with a k wire so this is the capsule and this whole thing is the posterior malleolus which is involved in this case you can see the mobility and this ligament over here is the pitfl we need a more superior dissection so we extended the incision because we need to plate the fibula as well so this is the complete exposure of the distal part of the posterior surface of the tibia this is another case i chose this case just to show you how the pitfl ligament is running from the fibula towards the posterior malleolus over here which is more clear in this picture you can see the pitfl this is the posterior malleolus this is the surface of the fibula this is the peroneae which we have retracted laterally and this over here is the flexor hallucis which has gone medially so next is the reduction so in this case we chose a plate contouring and reducing the posterior malleolus with the plate so uh, initially we didn't have any anatomical plates and we are well versed with contouring so we using a well, the contour system from the pelvic system to contour a plate as per the posterior surface of the tibia and you can see the contouring so that it fits into the tibial so now we buttress the posterior malleolus slide in the plate make sure because i have extended the incision all the way till the capsule i know where exactly the extent of the plate should be so easily adjusted so here the reduction i am achieving by buttressing the fragment so i start applying the screws from proximal to distal and once we put both the screws it will buttress and we get a reduction of the posterior malleolus as it will be clear so this is one screw applied and then while final tightening we have to make sure it is at the ideal position where it needs to buttress the posterior malleolus which i can fine tune with the help of an artery so this is the second screw so we have checked the reduction after applying the two screws and we can see a congruent joint however this is not the case always as in this other case it was a old case i operated after four weeks after injury here you can see even once i have buttressed the fragment the reduction is not anatomical so we need to check the reduction of posterior malleolus at this stage so you can see here it is a non congruent reduction so the textbook teaching is like this don't buttress the reduction should be first achieved a cannulated a guide wire for a small fragment cannulated system is put in then we put this screw we got a congruent reduction and then put the plate so this is a traditional textbook teaching and this is how we should do but as you got get more expertise a buttress reduction which i almost do in all cases we can follow that
So this case was picked to show that this is how it should be done. Next, in the same case, even though it is reduced, we want to put in a screw through the posterior myelage whenever it permits and this is how it is. This is the direction. I have deliberately taken it distally so that it goes away from the joint and anterior posteriorly also I have adjusted in such a way and now we check the depth. We usually in Indian patients we get a length of 38 to 42 and we put in this screw. This is through the plate and through the posterior malleolus to achieve the reduction. Now the posterior malleolar component is done. How about the fibula? So the exposure of fibula, as I said, this was the window where we fit the posterior malleolus. This is the peroneae group of muscle. So now we go lateral to the peroneae. So the peroneae is retracted medially. The fascia over here is exposed. And once we cut over it, we get the periosteum and the enclosing the fibula. And this is the posterior surface of the fibula. And as we go laterally, we get the lateral surface of the fibula. Using the periosteal elevator, we can clear the space. This was a PER injury, pronation external rotation injury. And in this case, we wanted to place the uh, plate in the fibula in the lateral aspect. So this is the fibular plate application laterally because we also wanted to put in a syndesmatic screw which is usually required in the pronation external rotation injury. The plate is held with the plate holder. A reduction is achieved and once we have the reduction then we can put in a fibular plate on the laterally. So this is applying screw on the proximal segment and now the distal segment and this completes the fibular plate application. And so the window is lateral to the peroneum. So this is another case. This is a supination external rotation injury. You can see a short oblique fracture. This is a fracture which is inviting me to plate it from posteriorly. A SCR injuries and a short oblique fracture, the best way is to put an anti plate of the fibula posteriorly. So hence I chose this case. You can see here how the fibular plate is also applied from posterior. So here you can see the posterior malleolar plate, again here an anatomical plate used and then the fibular plate and anti-glide mode we have put in from the posterior surface. This can even be done medial to the peroneae, however sometimes we may need to go laterally distally. So this is to demonstrate that a fibular plate can be placed posteriorly if the fracture pattern permits. Now once we have fixed the posterior malleolus and the fibula, Next is to the medial malleolus and how to do it. So in a prone position, uh, this is how we do it. The, uh, one of the assistant will uh, flex the knee and hold like this. And this is the view we get it. So we operate in this way in a prone position. So here we can see uh, the leg being lifted. I have marked the medial malleoli. This fracture pattern as we saw was more posterior medial so the incision is going towards posteriorly then the fascia is cut the periosteum is cut and we can see the fracture surface which again is exposed better with the periosteum and once the fracture is exposed we need to achieve reduction and then plan the fixation so in this case i already knew how to go ahead with the fixation as you again, if you remember the X-ray or the CD scan, this was more like a vertical nature and it requires a buttressing plate over here rather than a traditional medial malleolus screws. So I would like to put in a plate in this case. So let's see how we go. Once we have cleared the required space, we have chosen a one-third tubular plate and then in again in a buttress mode or in anti-glide mode, we have drilled it, checked it and then applied the screw over here and once we are finally tightening it that will make sure that the fracture pattern reduces then we apply a screw through the distal through the fracture and through the plate which will stabilize the medial malleolar fracture so this is the final follow up x rays we can see how we have gone through this case also required a syndesmatic screw as we, as it was a per injury and we have done it so this is another case uh, so we have seen simultaneously, if you have noted, I have chosen cases in such a way 
that the primary video demonstration was in a prone position but here it's in a lateral position where you, you can see a uh, fixation of the posterior malleolus a posterior plate applied for the fibula and once we external rotate in this position we can give in a small incision or however we need and we can go and fix the medial malleolus the only position the only time when, when i find it difficult is in the fracture pattern where we used prone where we need a plate in the posterior medial direction so in that, those cases i prefer a prone position otherwise it's even it's always going to be a lateral position and again for the beginners it's always begin to uh, start with a prone position as it will give you a better exposure of the posterior malleolus and ease in reducing the posterior malleolus in a prone position when you dorsiflex the posterior malleolus is almost reduced because the capsule which is attached with the posterior malleolus tends to reduce it when you dorsiflex it then that's easy in a prone position so this case was done in a lateral position and you can see here the final post operative x rays well complications uh, the main uh, important thing is the sural nerve because they tend to form neuromas when they are uh, damaged so there is a lot of variations we already spoken during the video demonstration so this is the incision and this is a beautiful anatomical dissection paper which talks about the patterns of uh, uh, sural nerve so if this is a typical incision which is required for the posterolateral approach and this is the most common uh, pattern of the nerve which runs from medially up to laterally down and we have can also have a vertical direction of the nerve that means the nerve can be encountered any time during the incision or in 50% uh, of the times it can be proximally laterally and uh, medially in the distal part of the incision and sometimes it can be lateral throughout so there can be any variation so you need to be careful because it can give rise to painful neuromas and other thing a rare thing again this is one of our cases which is very rare you can see an aberrant vessel so this is the fibula this is the peroneal group of muscle and uh, when we went to the posterolateral approach before we encountered the tibia you can see some vessels over here so this was the peroneal vessel which is aberrant in this case and is running all the way medially and this is probably continuing as the posterior tibial this is something which we encountered after operating so many cases and here you can see the big vessel this peronea is continuing as the posterior tibial so in this case we had to slide the plate in between the vessels and achieve fixation we were curious as to what it is so this is a normal ct angiography we have the trifurcation this is the anterior tibial so we have a peroneal artery which runs laterally and a posterior tibial which after the bifurcation here runs posterior medially however the ct in this patient cd angiography post you know that after the anterior tibial was there the trunk continued as a single one all the way down as a peroneae and here this is because of the artifact this is the, the vessel and here it is continuing as the posterior tibial so this case in this cases we should be careful in the dissection of the peroneal vessels and this was the post operative x ray in the same patient there has been a case report where in the posterolateral approach there was an amputation which was required because this case is a very rare variant where the peroneal artery was the only dominant foot supply to the foot so they were not aware of it they put in the plate so the entire vasculature of the uh, foot was gone and this patient uh, ended up in an amputation so there can be some variations in the peroneal group well let's move from the posterior malleolus where else can we use this approach the next is a pilon fracture so you can if you see this case it's a very high energy pilon lower you can see a big chunk posteriorly which we definitely cannot address by the standard standard anterolateral approach window to reduce this this fracture pattern requires some some sort of stability and reduction from the posterior so after spanning we went with scanning and you can see how big the disruption of this fragment is so um, this is the anterolateral fragment this is a posterolateral fragment this is a medial fragment so this requires buttressing from all directions so in this case again in the this is the posterolateral approach 
and now we chose an anterior approach to the ankle so same thing can be done in a sim in a, in a single positioning of the patient's limb and this was the final anterior plating and this is the posterior plating the fibula the posterior malleolus a medial plating and then anterolateral plating so this is uh, intraoperative images and this ct uh, this is an intraoperative ct which can give a orientation you know how the plates are placed well so one is in the complex pilon fractures posterolateral approach is important next is this is something which i have been using we got a series of almost 15 patients so this is a 60 year old male he had bb initial surgery was debridement so he had got two debridements then he had a flap and an ssg he presents to me after 3 months with a cast and this is the picture i mean the the only good skin flap was available posteriorly because uh, the tibia is a subcutaneous bone the shin so usually the injury you, you will be surprised that the anteromedial and anterolateral will be gone posterior most of the time the flap is intact one way of approaching this case is definitely uh, elizra mode of uh, fixation however we went in from the posteriorly and we could achieve a good reduction from the posterolateral lateral approach in this case. This is another case. You can see how bad the SSG and the scarring is. This came to us four or five months after the injury and a short metaphyseal fragment is there. So we exposed all the way through the posterolateral. lateral. We could continue the approach to proximally. That's exactly the beauty of this approach. The posterolateral lateral approach can be continued posteriorly upwards as a posterolateral lateral approach to the leg. And uh, this is the final plate construct uh, used in this patient. I have also patented a plate, designed my own plate for the posterolateral lateral approach for exactly these type of fractures, wherein it's a 4.5 system uh, for the diaphysis. Got a 3.5 system distally uh, aimed to, to get better hold at the small fragments and we got some diverging holes in between. So these are the cross sections which we got patented uh, in the recent times. Well, so the take home message of this approach, my dear friends, it's a very essential approach for addressing the posterior aspect of the tibial plafond, the posterior malleolus, the in complex pilon fractures. It is an approach which we all should know. And it's essential to have a thorough understanding about the anatomy of the area so that we can avoid complications. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep, for that brilliant lecture. Thank you. Um, yeah, just a few questions. Yeah. Uh, Sandeep, when you have a trimalleolar fracture, uh, how do you decide which fragment are you going to fix first? Yes. Is it the posterior malleolus or the fibula or the medial malleolus? What is your plan? Yeah. Uh, how uh, I approach and uh, the understanding is like this. Uh, for beginners, what are the problems uh, which is encountered if you go the wrong way? I'll tell you. Uh, if you fix the fibula first, what happens is we need anatomical reduction of posterior malleolus. If you fix the fibula, then you cannot assess the reduction of posterior malleolus in a lateral view because the plate of the fibula will try to exactly it will come where the posterior malleolus is. So whenever we have the plate of the fibula, there we cannot see the reduction of the posterior malleolus. So 95% uh, of my cases, it is a posterior malleolus, which I'm going to fix first. And especially because whatever case I'm going to span first, if, if they're bad. But sometimes uh, if you understand the pathoanatomy of the injury, the posterior malleolus is attached to the fibula through the PITFL. So when we have a high P, P or pronation external rotation injury, and there is a lot of overriding of the fibula. Those cases, if you reduce the fibula, that will also aid us in reduction of the posterior malleolus. You can understand the pathoanatomy, the posterior malleolus fracture, the PITFL, and the fibula. So uh, you may, in some cases, you may require to, I mean, in some difficult cases, you will understand that the posterior malleolus is not coming. It's not coming to its position. In such cases, you, you will be surprised to know that the moment you flip, you played the fibula, the posterior malleolus comes in place. So again, if you want to be sure, first try to reduce the fibula, but don't put in a plate. Because if you put in a plate, you cannot see the uh, reduction of the posterior malleolus. So it's a simultaneous uh, reduction of the fibula 
as well as the posterior malleolus we uh, i'll talk about uh, medial malleolus later so my usual approach is go with the uh, posterior malleolus first and then the fibula and in some cases i try to achieve reduction of both and then complete the fixation so now once this is done no before we go to the medial malleolus so uh, can i can we make a statement here that if you feel that there is going to be significant fibular overlap like a pronation external injury you mm -hmm. may have to restore the length of the fibula first yes. and then yes. the posterior malleolus yes. in all other cases we fix the posterior malleolus first can we make a statement yes you can right so you can go to the medial malleolus so usually once these uh, these two things is done the medial malleolus tends to fall in place now again here uh, i would like to bring in a controversy because the, the normal things have been dealt here so there is an approach called a posterior medial approach Uh, to an ankle which uh, i want to make in a, i mean i have i mean i never needed a posterior medial approach it's a strong statement which people may object to but if you if, if you see the case which i presented also the incision over the medial malleolus itself can be altered in such a way that we can go to the posterior aspect of the posterior medial aspect through the same incision because a typical posterior medial approach if we use it then fixation of medial malleolus will become difficult uh, so that's the whole point which i want so i understand the morphology of the fracture and then i position my patient that which i explained in my talk whether the prone or the uh, lateral position so then usually the so the fixation the medial malleolus tends to come in place then i fix the medial malleolus so now we are done with the fibula uh, we are we are done with the posterior malleolus fibula and then the medial malleolus after all the three fixations i i mean i did, uh, then i check in the stress view the external rotation which i explained in my previous talk whether the syndesmosis is still giving way or not and i couldn't uh, video record in this case because now i know that in the pr injuries it is anyways gone so i supplemented with the uh, syndesmotic screw so syndesmotic screw is the last one so in a pronation external rotation violence you would always put a syndesmotic screw isn't it uh nee there are there have been there have been cases where see this is a very gray area because there's a school of thought which says if we if we stabilize the posterior malleolus that stabilizes the syndesmosis that exactly. this is a usual this is a standard teaching but so, now yeah so better way to interpret is once you've done all your fixations you can try the intraoperative hook test Yes, exactly. And, Perfect. And then, and then uh, look at the syndesmotic diastasis, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Then you do a, a stress test, be it a hook test or an external rotations test. Still, it's opening. Then put in the syndesmotic screw. That's why that is the last one. Okay, Sandeep. I think that's a very, very important uh, because this is uh, even I have moved on to a postlateral approach for a very long time. Last maybe ten years, I've done only the postlateral approach for the. uh posterior malleolus i used to do like you said i have done the posterior medial as well mm -hmm. but the the moment i started doing the posterior lateral i found as the best exactly. way, best way to treat a, a trimalleolar fracture mm -hmm. and uh, what i do is i generally put the patient in a floppy lateral position mm -hmm. so i can flip either ways i can go uh yeah. through lateral or i can go i mean bring the patient in a supine position so yeah. that's how i do yeah exactly yeah uh, sandeep i think uh, the major part of the uh, discussion is over and uh, just one last question before we conclude hmm. uh, there's a trend in using the approach that you describe for non unions as well for the yes. distal tibia Now, isn't it yeah actually i mean if you go back to the original femister bone grafting and all which is described for the tbl diaphyseal non union uh, i was surprised that was a posterior lateral approach to the tibia exactly. exactly yeah so but uh, the if i'm if i'm right the original femester grafting looked at the proximal tibia as in yeah proximal tibia it was a uh, proximal into the middle but if they could do it there distal distal is a cake walk so exactly. we, we so i think a lot of uh, i've seen couple of papers that are published uh, and that looked at distal tibial non unions that have been uh, stabilized using yes. this particular approach so i showed i have 15 cases series which i mean they were all 4 5 months and you could you could see the scarring of the skin anterior medially i went in back there, there are some uh, malunions also i didn't add in the lecture malunion intraarticular trimal malunions which presented 3 4 months i used a posterior lateral approach and then did the correction so it's a very good uh, approach to you know uh, have in our kitty 
Okay, Sandeep, I think that's all the questions that we have for this session. Thank you for coming in. Fantastic lecture as usual. Always a pleasure to listen to you. And we really look forward to one more. Thank you.